but where we have branded the Republican Party at the national level as a party that will not raise your taxes, uh, we have had good success. And this is what uh, Coca-Cola has learned. They spend a lot of time branding Coca-Cola. They have quality control. They want you to be able to walk into the store, pick up a Coke, take it home, and drink it without having to look at it or ask your friends what's inside it or read the label uh, or asking the shop owner to have a taste of this. You know what's inside. You take it home. But if you get home with your Coke bottle and you're two-thirds of the way through and you look down at the Coke bottle and you see a rat head in what's left in your Coke bottle, you don't simply say to yourself, I'm wondering if I'm going to finish the rest of this particular bottle. <laughs> You wonder about buying Coke in the future, or ever, and you go on local TV and show the, the cool rat head in the Coke bottle to the local TV, and all of a sudden Coca-Cola has a problem. Uh, because it damages the brand for everybody. Republican elected officials who vote for tax increases are rat heads in a Coke bottle. They damage the brand for everybody else. This is not a victimless crime. Uh, this is not something, oh, so sorry, Fred's over here raising taxes. How sad for Fred and his family. Um, it, it, it hurts everybody else. So step one, don't raise taxes. That is the necessary but not sufficient condition for advancing liberty. Step two, something we've had not as much success on, is don't spend so much. And the second challenge is the one that is before us. How do we get elected officials in Washington, at state and local level, to stop spending so much uh, money? First thing that Obama and Reid and Pelosi did when they got to Washington, D.C. was that stimulus package, which was just an effort to spend $780 billion. I mean, the reason was that if they took a dollar out of the economy over here through debt or taxes and spent it over here, that would make us rich. If we do it 780 billion times. Imagine Reed, Pelosi, and Obama standing on one side of the lake with three buckets, and they get a bucket of water, and they walk over to the other side of the lake and hold a press conference in front of the TV cameras, and they pour the three buckets of water into the lake, and they announce that they are stimulating the lake to great deep depths. And we're going to do this many, many times, and the lake is going to get deeper. If you believe that at the end of 780 billion iterations of that, that the lake is deeper, then you will believe that taking money from people who earned it and giving it to people who are politically connected creates jobs. It's nonsense. It doesn't create jobs. It just creates disincentives. It was just to get the government to put more money on the table so the Democratic precinct workers could get paid off. Um, this lust for additional resources is a huge challenge. Now, I would have told you uh, 10 years ago, five years ago, one year ago, that the sad truth in American politics is you cannot get the American people fighting mad about spend too much. Back in, 19, in the 70s, they were spending too much money, but we couldn't get people mad until 78, 79, and 80, when spend too much turned into inflate the currency and turned into tax increases, both income tax increases and property tax increases. And then you had the tax revolt. 1993, Bill Clinton spent a bunch of uh, money on things and they raised taxes. And people got angry and you had uh, the Gingrich Revolution of 1994. But Obama very wisely said, I'm not raising anyone's taxes until we get past the 2010 election. <laughs> now I'm just going to spend too much. And somehow spend too much did engender real opposition. April 15th. We calculated at least 600,000 people at at least 640 rallies around the country. Maybe twice that, but that's sort of rock bottom, small C conservative estimate on the April 15th rallies. Then there was the July 4th rallies. And then there was the revolt of August. I was down in Orlando at one of the, setting up an Orlando center right meeting, and uh, the Democrat congressman there had announced he was going to have a town hall meeting. 7.30 Sunday night says, 7.30 Monday, we're going to have a town hall meeting. It's going to be at the IBEW Union Hall. The Democrats had a committee meeting uh, two hours before the town hall meeting. So in a room that fit 120 people, there were 90 Democrats sitting in the room and the doors open. But there were 1,000 people <coughs> for the 31 open seats. And the 1,000 people were 10 to 1 hours. And they were very, very unhappy. 
so somehow people have gotten sophisticated enough to recognize that if you spend too much now, taxes and inflation will follow, big problems follow, and people got angry and active angry um, early. And not just one time, but in April and in July and all across the country in August. And again on September uh, 12th, we're going to see that. So there's this huge effort, and I think this is extremely helpful because it means perhaps we can turn spending into an election issue that can defeat people who spend too much in 2010 uh, and 2012. Now, looking at, at, at fighting the spending issue, um, we need to decide how can we help elected officials withstand the pressures that they face. Um, for a long time, I've, I've heard people say, well, we elect these guys, that have backbone. We ought to find guys with backbone and send them to Washington or state capitals. And I'm in favor of backbones. Um, people are mammals, they have endoskeletons. They have their, their skeletal system inside uh, their body. And that's, that's useful. But it also means you can't see it to see how strong it is. Um, what it also means is if you take a human being and put them 200 feet under the water, 300 feet under the water, the level of pressure there just crushes people. Even people with really good backbones get crushed. You can send very good people to Washington, D.C. and to state capitals, and the only people they see all day are people explaining that they need to spend more money. And the pressure is not reasonable. Um, when you send even very strong people with functioning backbones, underwater, you give them suits to protect them. And what we need to create, uh, and that's why the Ocean State Policy Institute uh, and the center-right meetings are there, we need to create institutions um, that create an exoskeleton. Now an exoskeleton is what clams and lobsters have, the shells on the outside. You can go very deep in the water as a clam and make it. We need to create exoskeletons for our elected officials to counter the pressure, that we, the, the inhuman pressure, the unreasonable pressure that we know we're sending them into when we elect them to Congress or the Senate or the Presidency or to mayors or, or state legislatures or as governors. Um, and that's what I think April 15th and July 4th and the revolt of August uh, and 9-12 uh, is, is doing for us. Obama ran in 2008, promising change, and that sounded good to a lot of people. But they heard one thing and he meant another. They wanted somebody to change Washington. And Obama and his team plan on using the power of Washington to change America. They don't like America as it is, they want to use the government to change it. Americans are not happy with Washington and how big our government's got, and they would like to use the strength of America to change Washington. So we're both saying change, but we mean very different things. And what we've seen in the last nine months is that independents who had voted two to one for Obama and for Democrats in the House and Senate now tell you two to one that they think he's spending too much money, they don't like this tax on energy, they don't want a government takeover of health care, they're planning on voting for Republicans in Congress uh, in, in the next election cycle, and the independents that had heard one thing from Obama and had tired of, 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 of Bush flipped back and now tell us that they're not with the guy who wants to change the country. And of course, um, we have wisely, as a broad center-right movement, avoided the mistake that Republicans and conservatives made in 1998. 1998, we focused on Bill Clinton. And we said, Bill Clinton is a very icky person which was true, um, but having convinced people of that and spent tens of thousands, tens of millions of dollars of ads, uh, people said, you know, you're right, Bill Clinton's a very bad person, he treats his wife very poorly, I wouldn't want him anywhere near my daughters, I'm not gonna go vote for my Democratic congressman because you haven't given me an argument against voting for my Democratic congressman. You gave me an argument about how unpleasant Bill Clinton is personally. And this 